Hey, hi, how you doing? This is the Gamertron, and welcome back to the Gamertron Show. I do hope you watched my top 10 games of 2015. That was one of the biggest and most challenging videos I have ever worked on for a great deal of reasons. One of them being, there were so many fantastic games released in the year of 2015. And like I said in my Top 10 Games of 2015 video, which you really should watch, there were so many great games that came out this year, it was incredibly difficult just picking 10. I could have easily made a Top 15 or a Top 20 Best Games of the Year, because there were so many great games I played this year that were so good. But in the end, I could only pick 10, and there were some games that had to unfortunately be left out. So, let us take the time to celebrate and give honorable mention to some of the other great games that I played the year of 2015. Starting with Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege. I'm going to be honest with you, when this game was first announced, I had zero interest in it. But then, the more gameplay that I saw of it, and the good things I was hearing from friends who got to play the beta, in the end, I broke down and was like, okay, I've got to give this game a try, because I played Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Vegas 2, and I liked that game well enough. It was a decent shooter, very challenging, but Rainbow Six Siege. Damn, this is an addicting game. This game was originally going to take my number 10 spot in my top 10 games of 2015, but eventually Grey Goo won out for various reasons, but goddamn, I have put a lot of hours into Rainbow Six Siege already. I find the gameplay very fun, very challenging, very intense, with a heavy emphasis on skill, paying attention to your surroundings, tactics, strategies, patience, caution. It's a very, very, very different first-person shooter than what I'm used to. And that's what I liked about Rainbow Six Siege so much, is that it's such a different first-person shooter than what I'm used to. And although I mostly play this game solo, whether it be through the situations or playing Terrorist Hunt on Lone Wolf Mode, I do actually enjoy the multiplayer. Rainbow Six Siege has an actually surprisingly very mature, and very cooperative community. I've met some decent people and players playing Rainbow Six Siege multiplayer. Another big surprise for me in the year of 2015. Had no idea I would like this game as much as I do, but yeah, I really like Rainbow Six Siege, and I wanted so bad to put it on my top 10 games of 2015, just didn't make it. Another video game that almost made my top 10 games of 2015, and I really wanted to put it on there, but a few little issues that were bugging me about the game kept it from making it onto my top 10, and that would be Just Cause Free. I really enjoyed Just Cause 2. It's a fun, open-world action-adventure game where you just get to have a blast blowing shit up and killing tons of bad guys and doing crazy stuff with grappling hooks and parachutes. Just Cause Free is more of that, but offers a more smoother experience with, I think, better controls compared to Just Cause 2. With beautiful visuals, a lush, open world, an extremely fun, I mean extremely fun movement system, combining the grappling hook, your parachute, and your new wingsuit together. Traveling and exploring this open world has never been more fun. And this being just cause, the explosions are awesome and plentiful. If you're someone who loves action movies, who loves explosions, gunfire, just friggin' action, you will love the Just Cause games, including Just Cause 2 and Just Cause Free. And while I think Just Cause Free makes many improvements to Just Cause 2, like I said, there were a few nagging issues that kept it from my top 10 games of 2015. Like, one, there's only one save file. Now to make up for that, the devs have made it so that you can have areas of the game become reconquered by enemies and you have to take them over again. And while that's nice, if you want to see cutscenes or replay story missions, Gotta start the game all the way from the beginning. I mean, how do you go from 10 separate save files in Just Cause 2 to just one in Just Cause Free? Also, some of the optimization issues do bug me, like the times where I get stuttering and lag, granted after some patches. The game does run much, much better, but I still can't deny that some of the performance issues of the game do leave something to be desired. But hell, despite those little nitpicky negatives, just Cause Free is still a blast, a simple blast to play. If you like action games, if you like open world games, if you love explosions in general, 
screwing around with wacky physics in video games, and just having a good, bombastic, not-so-serious good time, I couldn't help but enjoy Just Cause Free, despite those little nagging issues. Another great game I played in the year of 2015 that, again, came out of nowhere and was a complete surprise to me, a lot of games like that happened in 2015, was Transformers Devastation. You guys know I love the Transformers, love the Transformers. However, I have always felt that the Generation 1 version of Transformers has never gotten proper representation in terms of video games. Sure, we had War 4 and Fall of Cybertron, but they were more of their own thing than a true re-representation of Generation 1 and the original Transformers cartoon that started it all. Transformers Devastation is a love letter to the original 1980s cartoon. From the voice acting, to the cutscenes, to the graphical style of the game, the look and sound of the game is just a massive homage to the original Transformers cartoon. But on top of all that, the game has a really solid combat system, which can actually be pretty challenging and require quite a bit of skill. Chaining together different melee attacks, different melee weapons, transforming into vehicles and using these special vehicle attacks, as well as ranged weapons and super moves, a variety of combos and counters, like, it's a dynamic, well-made combat system that's very fun and addicting. And it looks epic to boot. Seeing your favorite G1 Transformers come to life and beat the snot out of each other with damn cool looking moves? And special effects are just, ah, pure eye candy. However, two things that actually really bugged me about the game. One being its length. I find there were some missed opportunities for extra combat scenarios in the single player campaign. And also, why can we not play as the Decepticons? Every other Transformers video game to this point, until Transformers Devastation, has let you play as the Autobots, and the Decepticons. I'm not gonna lie, I am more of a Decepticon guy than an Autobot guy, so I was somewhat peeved that there is zero way, zero option to play as Megatron, Starscream, or Soundwave. Just like, missed opportunity? You already have the built-in animations and moves and voice acting, why not let us play as the Decepticons? I mean, oh, such a missed opportunity. But despite my petty little gripes, Transformers Devastation is a great game, especially for us Transformers fans. And for those of you who love video games with stylish melee combat, really like Transformers Devastation. And speaking of franchises that I love, that haven't gotten a good video game in a while, EA's Star Wars Battlefront. Let me start off by saying this, and believe me, this is a detriment to the game and one of the reasons it didn't make my top 10. Believe me, I understand the complaints. Star Wars Battlefront is overpriced. It is overpriced as hell. And EA is solely overpricing this game because it's Star Wars, and Star Wars fans, like myself, are gonna buy it because we haven't gotten a new Star Wars game of any sufficient caliber in a long time, and a new Star Wars movie just came out. So yeah, game is horribly overpriced. But this is why you wait for sales, and look for cheap deals online, because I still think Star Wars Battlefront is worth playing. If you watch my Star Wars Battlefront review, well, that will go into more detail why I enjoyed it. It is a loving recreation of many, many of the elements we love from the original Star Wars trilogy. The look, the feel, the sounds. A love letter, a simple love letter to Star Wars fans through the visuals and the audio. The amount of detail that DICE put into designing the environments, the character models, the weapons, and ripping out the sounds straight from the movies, putting them into the games. Oh, fantastic representation of everything Star Wars. And the gameplay, while simple. The Star Wars Battlefront does have simplistic gameplay, there's no denying that. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with the simple shooter gameplay. And unlike a lot of shooters I've played, Star Wars Battlefront is just buttery smooth. In terms of controls and movement and aiming, it's just a nice feeling game to play. Multiplayer can be absolutely chaotic sometimes, and seeing these big battles unfold, being a part of them, trying to go for the objective while you're in the middle of this massive shootout, it's pretty fun. And the single player, while lacking content, and I really think DICE, the developer of the game, was extremely lazy when it came to the single player, they could have easily added a ton of more content into the single player without spending that much more money. I mean, you have maps for the game literally just lying there in multiplayer that could be easily used for single player, like, why? 
Uh, however, the single player does manage to be fun, simple, arcadey fun, and can all be co-opted with a friend. Look, I can understand the dislike for Star Wars Battlefront, but if I'm being honest, I enjoyed the game. I really like it as a Star Wars fan and as someone who likes to play with friends, whether it be co-op or some chaotic multiplayer. I just enjoy the game, simple as that. Now speaking of big name games and multiplayer shooters, Call of Duty Black Ops Free. No, I'm not joking with you here. Look, I have had my rants and my negative, aggressive feelings towards the Call of Duty franchise for its many missteps. But even I cannot deny that when I played Call of Duty Black Ops 3, I had fun. And despite the atrocious launch on PC, after some patches, the game does run okay. It still has a few performance issues, but it's running okay now. It's at the very least in a playable state, unlike when it was first launched, but there's something to the game, something about the quality to the game and the gameplay, that even though when the game first launched and it had a horrible PC port and was lagging and crashing and all this other crap, I still wanted to play it. I wanted to fight through the issues to get to the meat of the game because I could see the fun that was to be had. And I honestly did have fun with Call of Duty Black Ops 3. I had fun with the single player. It feels like they were actually trying with the single player, even though, again, there were some missteps. Zombies was great, because zombies is always bloody great. That is the one thing about Call of Duty that is consistently quality, the zombies mode. And the multiplayer, when playing with bot, can actually be enjoyable. Playing with people online still sucks ass. I mean, come on. It was 2015. It's now 2016. Treyarch, Activision, Infinity Ward, Sledgehammer. You guys have been making Call of Duty games for how long now? You still can't get your online to work properly? You still have built-in lag? <laughs> Fuck that. But you know what? Overall, I enjoyed my time with Call of Duty Black Ops 3. I actually had fun in a Call of Duty game. Despite the missteps and the piss-poor launch on PC, there was some fun to be had with the shooting, with the new special abilities, with the action set pieces that Call of Duty is known for. I had fun with the game. I can't deny. I can't lie. I had fun with Call of Duty Black Ops Free. And since we're talking about first-person shooters that have affected the history of the industry are quite enjoyable, but surprisingly have a lot of issues for no good reason, Wolfenstein, the old blood. Let me say this right off the bat. I still love the gameplay, the visuals, the storytelling, the writing, and the characters. All of that returning in this prequel to last year's Wolfenstein The New Order, here in Wolfenstein The Old Blood, all that remains and returns in this prequel sequel expansion. All that stuff is still great! However, they managed to fuck it up, at least the PC version. This game uses the same graphics engine as Wolfenstein The New Order. Hell, it reuses most of the same assets from that game, yet somehow it runs worth and has a ton of optimization and graphics issues. I have a GTX 970 graphics card. I can run Wolfenstein The New Order at max settings, no issues whatsoever. How did you mess up the old blood Bethesda and machine games? What is with all these issues? Mine specifically being texture stuttering, flashing, and sometimes just disappearing altogether. While across the damn board, PC players have been running into ridiculous nonsensical issues concerning the graphics and performance of this game. You use the same graphics engine and the same assets as the new order. And the New Order, for the most part, for most people, ran fine, looked fine. And the worst part is, after all this time, it still hasn't been patched. There's nothing we can do on our end. The only way to fix this crap is to literally to get the best graphics card out there, like a Titan X, in order to fix these graphical issues. People with GTX 970s or lower or having the AMD equivalents, we're, we're fucked. We're screwed! We can't do anything! Literally nothing we do to the graphics, nothing we alter, can make the game look as good as it could look. There's nothing we can do on our end. Machine Games and Bethesda have to patch it, and they've never patched it. Through the entirety of the year, 2015, it's had like, what, one, two patches? And none of them address the real issues? And people are still having problems across the board? Like, what happened here? And here's the big kicker, here's the real shit kicker about all this. 
The old blood is really, really good. The gameplay is great. The characters, the writing, the quality of that returns from the new order. Like, oh! The gameplay is so good with a heavier focus on shootouts and stealth and your choices, making different choices in combat scenarios, fighting hordes of Nazis, stuff that wasn't entirely in the new order. Like, past the graphical issues, I see the enjoyment and the fun and the awesomeness of the old blood, but it's held back by the PC issues, which sucks so much because past the graphics, it's a really solid, really good, really fun first-person shooter. I really wish I could put this on top 10 games of 2015, but they never fixed the graphics and PC issues, so... Damn it, the old blood, a really good first-person shooter held back for such silly reasons. Okay, let's talk about another surprise game of the year that surprised everybody with its quality and uniqueness. Helldivers, made by the same developers who made Magicka, Helldivers is a fun, frantic, challenging, and surprisingly funny top-down co-op shooter. Now, this game was originally a PlayStation exclusive, but oh, thank goodness, it came to the PC later the year of 2015. The game has a colorful, cartoony, appealing art style, action-packed, top-down shooter gameplay with a few interesting mechanics that really separated from other top-down shooters, a heavy emphasis on teamwork and community within the multiplayer, some really challenging and crazy situations that the game puts you in, Helldivers is just really a surprisingly really good game to play by yourself, with other people online, or with friends. Whether it be on PlayStation or PC, get Helldivers. It's a steal, and it's guaranteed good fun if you like top-down shooters. Or if you like multiplayer games with a heavy focus on community. Now before I end the video, here are just a few quick other games that I played this year, and I really like them, but just not as much as others. Torin, a really great indie game focusing on a Brazilian legend and myth. It has beautiful visuals, intriguing philosophy, simple gameplay, but creates good pacing throughout the game, and it has a dragon, and you guys know I love dragons. Clan Destine, an indie game I'm sure you guys haven't heard of, and I didn't either till I just saw it pop up on the Steam store. But this is a really well-made indie game with a few memorable characters, pretty solid stealth gameplay, especially if you're the kind of person that likes the Splinter Cell games, and a great espionage spy feeling. And premise. Despite the game's, um, awkward animations, I still do highly recommend it for fans of stealth. Speaking of stealth games, Assassin's Creed Chronicles China. Now, I'll be honest with you, I'm not the biggest fan of the Assassin's Creed games, they just don't appeal to me, but Assassin's Creed Chronicles China I actually really enjoyed. It's a 2D side-scrolling stealth and action game with beautiful visuals, a cliched but classic plot, some challenging gameplay that leads to some interesting, improvised, and intense moments of stealth, and really great usage of the 2.5D world. Yeah, I usually don't like or play Assassin's Creed games, but I really liked Assassin's Creed Chronicles China. Alright, let's finish this off with just one last game I really had to mention. Monstrum. This was a very popular game on my live streams. Oh yeah, you guys love Monstrum, and I love Monstrum. It's a really good indie game. If you like first-person survival horror with the hide-and-seek-esque gameplay, if you like kind of procedurally generated random playthroughs of games, You'll like Monstrum, if you like cool, creepy, and horrifying horror monsters, you'll like Monstrum. Monstrum can be a very intense, very intimidating, very scary, and creepy experience. That can be quite challenging, but also very replayable. I really liked Monstrum, and you guys really liked Monstrum, and it shows. It's a great game to let's play and live stream and whatnot. So those are my honorable mentions for the video games of 2015 that just didn't make my top 10 games of 2015. I still really enjoyed all these games mentioned. There were just so many fantastic, amazing, and just fun video games that I played this year. So many games that I love, had so much fun with, and just, ugh. They deserve recognition, they deserve to be played, and they deserve to be talked about. And although they didn't make my top 10, I am more than happy to put them in my honorable mentions. And I hope you guys will give all these games, whether it be from my top 10 or this honorable mentions video, at least somewhat of your attention. I really liked all these games. I had so much fun with them all. 2015 was, I know I'm repeating myself, but just such a great year for video games. 
Well, that's been a video. Please, if you like the video in any way, shape, or form, please hit the like button. Hitting the like button helps you, helps me, helps everybody involved with the video. If you hit the like button, please leave a comment. What are your thoughts, feelings, and opinions on these games presented and the video itself? And if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, consider supporting me and my channel by subscribing to me. Anyways, that's been a video, and I will see you guys later.